Hello, and welcome to Idea Zone. My name is Sandy Roberts, and my business is Kaleidoscope Enrichment. Hopefully we've met at this point, uh, either at a local event around Bla Blairstown, New Jersey, or through Family Maker Camp, or online doing other events like Maker Fairs or Victorian Days. However we've come together, I am so glad that you're here. I'm sorry for those that have been following that my Idea Zone programming kind of took a back seat this summer. I've been so busy doing programs for the Warren County Library and as I said for Maker Camp and for other groups that I kind of let my own video feed fall to the side. So I promise to do better coming into the fall. A um, couple of quick exciting things to let you know about before we dive into our project. Obviously, I've still got lots of great programming going on with the Warren County Library. You can find them at warrenlib.org. Uh, right here at Kaleidoscope, I have got all kinds of great stuff up on the blog. I've been adding lots of fun projects, uh, so make sure you check that out at kaleidoscopeenrichment.com. Obviously, the book is still available. You can get that on Amazon. You can get that on Barnes & Noble. Over 100 projects. They'll certainly keep you busy. And if you go on over to makercamp.com, you can find my whole summer uh, playlist of all the fun projects that we did over there. And, and coming up in October, starting October 1st, I'm actually gonna be offering a really cool class called Move and Groove with Makey Makey. It's a little bit of coding, a little bit of electronics, and a whole lot of creativity and fun. So make sure you check that out. Now, it's back to school time. Usually this time of year, there's a project I would always do, and it's the duct tape pencil bag, but today we're going to take it up a notch and add a little bit of technology with a simple circuit. So this is our bag. It has a Ziploc bag as your basic um, form. We cover it with duct tape so it's nice and waterproof and tough. And then we use some conductive tape and an LED and the zipper itself is the switch that turns that on. So I don't know if you could catch that quite well with the light, but when you open it, it turns off the light. So when it's closed, there's the light. You see, you can get it. I know it's not showing up very well on camera, but um, that's the basic idea. So this is a simple series circuit with a switch. We're gonna build it today, right now. Let's talk about our supplies. Okay, so what do we need for materials? We have here uh, duct tape, of course, we're gonna need for uh, our project. You can get um, whatever kind of duct tape you like solids, patterns, you can even get the duct tape sheets. Pretty much anything goes with this. Uh, you are gonna need your standard zipper lock bag. It doesn't have to be, you know, heavy duty because we're gonna be covering with duct tape, so that'll work. If uh, this is a gallon size bag, if you have a smaller bag, you'll just have a smaller um, pencil bag. But I like the gallon size for this because uh, it gives us a lot of longer space that's really good for our pencils and pens and such. You're gonna need, of course, a pair of scissors, you're gonna need a ruler, and you're gonna need a marker because we're gonna have to measure this. We wanna make sure that the bottom of our bag is nice and straight. So we're gonna need those tools. And then for our electronics components, we are gonna need either copper tape or this is maker tape, it's a fabric tape. This is conductive, okay? So unlike you know, your regular invisible tape, this actually conducts electricity. It has metal woven into it. In the case of a copper tape, it has, um, it's flattened copper uh, and it has an adhesive on the back. So you peel away the paper and it's sticky on the back. Um, and that's really useful for these kinds of projects. If you don't have something like this, you can order this. I like to order this from makershed.com. Uh, uh, you can get maker tape there. If you don't have it or can't order it, you can use thin strips of aluminum foil and a glue stick instead in this project. That will work for this project. You might need some invisible tape too. Um, just to hold the battery on, but if you don't have maker tape or copper tape, you can use um, the aluminum foil. In all cases, you're gonna want it to be about a quarter inch thick, okay? And we're gonna need a battery. This is a, what we call a coin cell battery. It's three volts. That's the amount of energy that it puts out, the amount of electricity it puts out. Uh, this is a 2032, a 2035 will also, or 2025 will also work. Um, if you don't have one of these around, you can get them at the dollar store, you can get them at most um, pharmacies, but you can also take a little electric tea light and crack that open and hack it and get one of these batteries out of it. So if you have those lying around or you're able to find those at the dollar store, grab them because uh, you can use those for so many things. In fact, check out Scrappy Circuits. They have a million and one things you can do by hacking a tea light. 
And that said, you're going to need an LED. You need something to light up. So this is a five millimeter LED. This is a 10 millimeter. I love these big um, kind of gumdrop LEDs. If you can get your hands on those, they're great. Again, this is in the uh, paper um, origami circuits kit for Maker Shed. You can also order them online. These are a little easier to find. And in fact, if you go the hack a tea light route, you'll find that one of these five millimeter LEDs is in there. Now, LED stands for light emitting diode, and we need to have a little conversation about these before we get started. So let me zoom in here. Doop, doop, doop. Okay. Every LED has, of course, its bulb. This is what's gonna light up, but it has two little leads, little legs. You'll notice one leg is longer than the other, and the other is a shorter leg. The longer leg is your positive lead. The shorter leg is your negative lead. The energy from your battery has to flow in the right direction through the LED or it's not gonna light up. So for example, if I take my battery and I align it so that the positive, the plus side, the smooth side of the battery is lined up with the long lead, the positive lead, and the rough negative side of the battery is lined up with the negative lead. And if I slide that right over, I can test to make sure that my battery and LED work and it should light up when I do that. Now, if I put it on backwards with the negative lead on the positive, nothing's gonna happen. So it's really important when we do this project that we know which side is which. Easy way to make sure you don't mess it up as you go. Just take a marker, okay? And color that LED just a bit, okay? Um, that way it'll just kind of give you that visual cue so you don't forget which one is which. Um, I often do that because it's really easy to mess up. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry while I make my bag. Let's start with our bag here. We're gonna get our ruler out. I'm gonna measure about five inches. So if you take a look at this bag, let me zoom out here. Okay. If you take a look at this bag, um, this is, I, I think, a good size to be able to store lots of different things in. I don't like to do the whole gallon bag because then it's just really unwieldy and it takes a lot of time. I don't, you can do a little bit shorter if that's more something to your liking. It's really up to you. Um, and everybody's gonna be a little different. I find five inches lets me get three solid strips of tape on there and it's just about the right size for me. Um, so that's what I did for this bag and that's what I commonly do. But you can adjust it to your needs. It's your bag, you do you, okay? So there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get my marker. I am going to line up my ruler and I'm just gonna mark a couple spots at five inches from the top along the bag. I'm trying not to get marker all over my shirt. I think I already have because of course. Um, then I'm just gonna use my ruler. Oh, one of those is not right. <laughs> Let's see, what did I mess up? You know, what I messed up is I'm not wearing my glasses. Bad Sandy. Really gotta wear those glasses. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I think, uh, looking at my grid, it's the middle one that's off. Anyway, line these up with my ruler. Just give it a line across there. Easy peasy. That's all I need the ruler for. We're done with that. We're done with our Sharpie for now. Get out your scissors and we are just gonna cut right across on that line, trying to keep it as straight as we can. It's pretty forgiving. If you don't get it perfect, you're gonna cover it up with tape anyway. You'll have the opportunity to trim it later, so don't you know drive yourself crazy about it. It's not a big deal. All right, now we come to the fun part. We get to decorate our bag with our tape. So I have this, uh, this kind of deep blue I'm, I'm digging right now. Um, and again, this is really forgiving. You don't have to line it up. You don't even have to be straight if you don't want to. Um, don't drive yourself crazy about it. I am gonna try and get the top lined up nicely along the edge of my bag. I like to go all the way up to the top. Some people prefer not to. It's up to you. And I've got my mat stuck to my tape now. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna trim. Like you see, I'm going over the edges. It totally doesn't matter at this stage because we're gonna trim all that back later and you won't even see it. Okay, I'm gonna come on down to the next one. And again, you can vary it up. You saw that on the last one. I um, did three different colors. If you've got patterns, go crazy. Now the important thing with this last 
layer is I want it to be over the edge here. I want it to be over the bottom because we're going to fold it to finish the bottom because when we cut it, we, we opened up this bottom of our bag and now everything would fall out of our bag if we left it that way and that wouldn't be very good at all, right? Don't want that. So here we go. We're just going to make sure that this is going to overlap that bottom. Now we get a second try on the other side, so don't worry too much. All right. Now we lift the whole thing up. Okay, flip it over and ooh, straighten my mat because wow, I'm making a mess here. And we just fold that up nice and neat. And again, you don't have to make it absolutely perfect. It's, it's do your best. I've done these a couple times, so I'm pretty good at it. But you know, give that a nice fold. Now that bottom is sealed and we don't have to worry about um, that being a problem later. All right, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going for just a straight up blue denim. I'm just really liking the, the blue today. And I'm going to make sure that I wrap this one around too. I'm gonna start from the bottom on this one. I just like to kind of um, offset it that way. I don't know why, it's a thing. Um, but I wanna make sure that I fold it over the bottom twice because you really wanna reinforce the bottom. It's the weakest spot. So I'm just gonna lay that on there like that. I'm gonna flip. Just carefully fold the tape up again. Make sure I've got a nice, strong bottom. Now, if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to just go straight to the bottom and do a contrasting color along the bottom, that looks really cool. So if you don't line it up, you don't get it just right, trim it and just do a whole separate piece of tape that folds over. That's totally okay. The most important thing is that one way or another, you seal that bottom up, okay? All righty, now. Just gonna go ahead and throw a little bit more tape on. Quick hint, if you're not used to working with duct tape, um, different tapes tear better or worse, different tapes cut better or worse. I find that true duct tape um, is a little harder to cut and I find it easier to rip. Cheaper versions, eh, it kinda depends. Um, with all of them, if you're trying to pull your tape and you're having trouble cutting it or pulling it, stick an edge to your table and pull away from the uh, edge that's a really good way to get tape off the roll. And you see, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm not too worried about the edges here because I know I'm gonna trim those. Okay, so lining that right up along the top. And again, does not have to be perfect. I can always trim away extra plastic if I want to. All right, so now I'm just gonna come in with my scissors. One thing I like to do, let's see, I'm gonna zoom so you can see this because it's important is I like to press really hard at this point along the edges so that I can see that indentation where the edge of my bag is because I don't want to go cutting my bag open now on the side. So I like to do that and then I just cut just on the outside of that, okay? And again, if you make a mistake here and do accidentally cut your bag, not a big deal. You just go over with another bit of tape. Um, and again, this is a fun time that you can um, add contrasting edges and, you know, really go crazy with it. You know, this is a really fun project to just be creative and make something unique and special. I'm making mine really simple right now, but you don't have to. You can go crazy. Get out all the tapes. More tape is better. Okay. Oh, I did that without the wide lens. My apologies. But you can see I've now trimmed it and you can see it's like not perfect, but that's where coming in with, um, you know, another color is a really fun thing to do. I think I'm going to do a little bit of orange. I kind of like the orange. I'm going to go ahead and reinforce my edges and my bottom. And then I could even do a strip along the top if I want to. So just eyeballing it, trying to make sure it's nice and straight. When I didn't do a very good job. Here's the nice thing about this. It's very forgiving. <laughs> it comes right off. So you can have a second chance. And isn't it nice to have a second chance in life? I like second chances. I'm down with that. All right, here we go. Almost done with the construction of our bag. Now, you might be the kind of person that's like, yep, I'm good, Sandy. I don't need to go any further. I don't need it to light up. I like my duct tape bag. You do you. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how to make your pencil bag. <laughs> um, these are great for camps and crafts. I will say that. Great school projects, um, great library, make and takes. Um, so they're really just fun. 
I'm gonna just fold that over. And you see, it's not perfect. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna know in a second because I'm gonna trim it away. Fold it. Now, you may be more of a perfectionist than I am. That's awesome. Go for it. Follow your bliss. I'm not. So, I am, I wanna get to the good stuff of the, the circuit. That's what I'm all about. Actually, <laughs> I wanna get to the good stuff of stickers at the end because <laughs> I'm just a big kid. <laughs> All right. And like I said, I think I am going to go ahead and just add, I don't, I don't need to reinforce it at this point, but if you didn't close that up, this is a good opportunity to just reinforce it one more time. And just kind of eyeball. And again, you can be much more precise if that is something that's important to you. And I'm just going to fold it. So I've got like kind of a, I like that. That looks kind of cool. Okay, I'm just gonna trim. There we go. So at this point, you've got a completely functional, very awesome duct tape pencil bag. Um, it opens up at the top. You can put your stuff in there. It's great. But I would like to add more. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add our um, electronics. And this is really simple to do. This is what we call a series circuit. So it means that the energy flows directly from our power source, the battery, through our conductive material, our um, conductive tape, to our load, which is our LED, our light, and then back around to the battery again. Um, we do have a switch, which means that the switch will open the circuit and stop the flow of electricity, or you can close the circuit and the electricity will flow and light our light up. So it's a really simple circuit. Um, and that's why I love it, because it's a great starter project. So the first thing we need to do is take our LED and we are actually going to, and I'm gonna zoom for you again. Da -da -da. Why do I always make that sound when I zoom? It's weird. Um, I'm just gonna use my fingers to just gently fold the leads of the LED out, up and out. Be very gentle with this, because they can break. Now, if that happens, it, pretty much you can't use that LED. I'm gonna be honest, it's just done. So be gentle when you do this. If you have needle nose pliers, that might be a great idea uh, to use. But there you go. So now you can see, kind of made, let's see if I can put it in there. Little bunny ears, that's what I call them, bunny ears. But that's the basic idea. And you'll notice that one still has the, the Sharpie marker on it, so I know that that's my positive lead. So now you have to decide where you wanna put your LED on your bag. Um, with the one I made before, zoom it out a little more. Um, I kind of put it to the side. I like to follow that uh, rule of thirds. Uh, that's me. You might have a different opinion. You might want to put it right in the middle. You know, you might want to put it all the way to the corner. Whatever you want to do. It's, it's your bag. It's wherever you like it. I will say this. You want to pay attention to the positive and the negative. I want the positive going up towards the top, towards my zipper, and the negative going down towards the bottom of the bag. Okay, we're gonna do the top part first. So I'm gonna take my tape, and again, if you're using aluminum foil, you're gonna cut strips of your aluminum foil and use a glue stick to do this. But this sticky back conductive tape is great. So and for this one, we don't have to do any fancy folds or anything, it's the simplest circuit. So you can see it has a a, a, pla a backing, a paper backing to it. So we're just gonna peel that away. You wanna go a little at a time when using something like this. And normally I, I have in the past used copper tape for this. Um, I have fallen in love with maker tape, which is a fabric version of the same kind of conductive tape. And the reason I like it is it's just a little more forgiving for projects, um, especially this one. It's gonna last a little bit longer. It's not gonna break or tear. So I really love it for this. But and it also looks really cool. <laughs> so now I've just stuck the tape, zooming. I know I've been, I'm doing a lot of zooming today. Maybe I'll just keep it kind of smaller. So if you can see that, I've stuck the tape over that lead that we folded um, and gone all the way up to the top of our bag. Now I'm gonna fold this over into the bag. And try and keep it kind of straight, okay? because this is how we're gonna make our switch. And it needs to go over the zipper part. See where that little zipper is? It needs to go at least that far, okay? So it closes. I'm just gonna trim it. Oh, cut my tape. 
One nice thing about copper versus the maker tape is that the copper tape is a little easier to tear, but um, okay, so that's one side of our circuit. Now we're gonna do the other side. Same type of thing. We are going to take our tape and you'll notice I keep my tape, copper or um, maker tape in the baggie. <laughs> Don't take out the roll and have it sitting around. It will end up everywhere. So keep it in the bag and just pull out what you need. So again, I'm going to stick it onto that lead, right? And I'm just going straight. You can do patterns as long as you always keep the tape for the positive side separate from the tape for the negative side and don't break it. Like I can't do a piece over here and think it's gonna be connected, okay? So the negative side needs to all be one connected piece. The positive side needs to be all one connect connected piece and they cannot cross because you'll short your circuit. So coming down from our lead, we're gonna flip the bag over and come up a little bit. Right about there looks good. We're gonna put our battery on now. So we're just gonna trim that right where it is, okay? And I'm gonna just take a little piece of the tape. And if you've ever hung a poster, maybe you've taken scotch tape um, or masking tape and you fold it over so that the outside, the adhesive is folded out, make a little loop. Okay, I'm gonna stick that on here. And I wanna make sure it's right on top of my tape coming from the other side. I'm just gonna get rid of some of this paper. Now I'm gonna take my battery. My negative side is, this is my negative lead facing down. So this has to be connected to the negative lead so that everything is flowing in the proper direction. So we're gonna stick that on right there, like that. And then I'm just gonna come from the top of this battery, the positive side, and come right on down. And I'm gonna, I'm trying to keep it kind of lined up because I want them to match up at the top. So just kind of paying attention to that. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. This is gonna go into the bag past, this is the hardest part. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just trim, oh look, it's already lighting up on me. Trim it. Um, so again, you just wanna make sure it goes over the zipper part. Okay, let's see. Now, if I bring it together, there we go. We've got light. So when you close your bag, those two sides come together and the whole thing lights up and there you go. You've got your bag. When you open the zipper, it goes off. Now, um, you may be saying to yourself, is that gonna stay on? Honestly, I like to take a little bit of, like if I have a little bit of scrap tape or I just take another little piece of tape, I like to put a little duct tape over it, both to hide the battery and to keep it from getting wet and to make sure that it doesn't come off. And it's easy enough, as you saw, to replace, to pull up this tape and replace the battery when you, when it runs out. Um, so that's number one thing that you can do that to protect your battery. Now, you can see this is gonna keep on going on and on and on. Easy way to fix that. A little bit of tape. Okay. We are going to fold it over. <laughs> it's very sticky, but not quite all the way. About two thirds of the way. Okay, see how I did that? So it's like a little bit sticky on the one side. You can also just fold a piece and then stick an extra piece on, it's fine. I'm gonna come in here and I am going to just put that in, stick that on so that this covers, stick it down well, so that, that covers my tape. That means whenever I don't want it to seal, I can just fold that flap and it will make it, um, not go on. That way it saves my battery a little bit. And you can make this smaller if you want because I made that quite large so you could see it, but I can make that half the size so that um, this seals up nicely. And then whenever I want it to light up, I just fold it and my switch works, okay? So really easy hack to make that um, something that will save your battery because <laughs> you don't necessarily want it lit up all the time, right? So there you go. That is your super cool light up pencil bag couple different varieties there. Um, easy to do, quick project, and a lot of fun. You will have the coolest pencil bag in virtual school <laughs> with this. Now, of course, those of you that have done parallel circuits can add more lights as you like, um, and maybe I'll have to make a video about that next time. All right, back over to the other camera. 
Okay, I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope you had fun. I certainly did. I could probably sit and make these bags all day. They're really, really fun to make. Um, they're easy. They don't talk to cost a lot of money. Um, and they're supplies that you can find pretty much anywhere, especially if you're using aluminum foil on a tea light. Um, if you have a maker space or some electronics kit uh, materials around, easy to find LEDs and the tape. Like I said, if you go to Maker Shed, they have a paper circuits kit and an origami circuits kit that have all the supplies you need for at least five projects in it. Um, so, you know, you can have a lot of fun. You can say, this one I put stickers. You can get out your Sharpie and Sharpies draw onto uh, duct tape really well. So you could decorate that if you're artistic. I am not, but you might be. So you can have a lot of fun with these, really personalize them. You know, make one for each class if you want to, and they store your stuff really well because they are waterproof, they're really strong. I've had these last for years. Um, if you are concerned about your LEDs, uh, you know, getting knocked off, a little bit of invisible tape or packing tape will keep them um, secured for a good long time without any issue. So I hope that you enjoyed that. If you go ahead and create one, definitely, you know, uh, tag me. I would love to see what you're making, especially if you go ahead and add a parallel circuit to that, where you'd have to kind of make a ladder so that each LED goes back to the battery itself. Um, but you could certainly do that if you want to add more LEDs and really have a bag that has some serious bling to it. Um, and of course, you could do this very same concept um, if you make a cloth zipper bag yourself. Um, and you could simply do a sewn circuit with this or use the fabric maker's tape and add an LED. In fact, maybe you have a fabric bag sitting around. Maybe you have a pencil bag that you just want to add a little light to. You can go and retrofit any bag with uh, some maker's tape and an LED, and that'd be great too. All right. <laughs> my name is Sandy Roberts. My company is Kaleidoscope Enrichment. My book is The Big Book of Maker Camp Projects, and I am so glad to be back here with you online on YouTube making fun things. I promise I will be back soon with even more. All right, take care and have a great day. Bye.